but it is predicted that Kamala Harris will die in a plane crash due to a bird strike in St. Louis on November 3rd, 2022. The post date of this video proves that this prediction is being made ahead of time, as does this timestamped email and forensic notes PDF document. If you are skeptical for some reason, please email me and I will forward these to you. Today's date is October 17th, and there is zero news of where Kamala Harris will be on November 3rd. She doesn't really announce where she's going to be very often ahead of time anyway. But this is uh, more than two weeks in advance, and so there's no way that Kamala Harris would be announcing dates like that that far in advance. So anyway, the point is, is that there's no way of knowing where Kamala Harris will be. There's no way of knowing that she will be in St. Louis on November 3rd in order for this prediction to be fulfilled. And that is the point of this particular video. I think this will be the only video that will explain the reasons for knowing that Kamala Harris will die in a plane crash in St. Louis. Not that she will die in a plane crash, but specifically St. Louis. And this video gets exponentially more interesting and amazing as it goes. And I really tie it all together at the end. It all comes together at the end of this video. Make sure you listen to all of this video. Again, this is the only video that will be explaining St. Louis anyway. But this is one of the, by for sure, one of the most important videos on this channel. I, it's just mind boggling. And it gets more interesting as it goes. And it is extremely important. It is extremely important and it really covers the big, it is the big picture here. This video is the big picture. Other videos are explaining how Kamala Harris will die in a plane crash on November 3rd. And what I mean is other videos are explaining trails and prophetic signs that are indicating this and explaining how this is known. This video in particular is explaining how it is known that she will die in St. Louis, specifically St. Louis. At least this is what I believe God's big picture of signs is indicating. To begin with, I'm just going to quickly read an, a short email that I wrote and then I will get into some more explanation. This email is documenting the prediction that Kamala Harris will die in a plane crash due to a bird strike in St. Louis, Missouri, on November 3rd, 2022. An eclipse is the result of the sun being exactly 400 times further away from the Earth than the moon and exactly 400 times bigger than the moon. The great American solar eclipse in the 17th year of this century peaked near St. Louis and over an area of the country nicknamed Little Egypt. In the Bible, Pharaoh in Egypt persecuted the Jews for 400 years, and Pharaoh is Antichrist symbolism. Exactly 400 days before the bird strike of Harris's plane on November 3rd was the day that the St. Louis Cardinals Historic 17-game win streak came to an end in St. Louis. This was the same day that the Blue Jays player broke the record for home runs in a season for a second baseman at 44 home runs. From the Bible, the number 17 is symbolism for the Antichrist, who is the 44th president that will serve a second presidency after he will replace Harris. This was also the day that U.S. Fish and Wildlife declared 23 species extinct, including a bird named Lord Godbird that hadn't been seen since 1944. The 44th president wore basketball jersey number 23 in high school. This is merely scratching the surface of the reasons for how this prediction is known in advance. For more information, please read the website trumpprediction.com. All right, now let's break this down a little bit. In astronomy, the grand coincidence, and this is an astronomical term, the grand coincidence is that the sun is exactly 400 times further away from the moon to Earth and is also exactly 400 times bigger than the moon. And this is what produces perfect solar eclipses. And as far as we know, this is the only place in the universe 
which there is able to view perfect solar eclipses. And this is the grand coincidence. And it's exactly 400, which isn't an odd number. It's an even number. And as I was saying, he, the Pharaoh in the Bible persecuted the Hebrews in Egypt for 400 years. And so this eclipse that traversed over America peaked right in the center of the country over an area of the country nicknamed Little Egypt. And so this is a huge coincidence in itself. But it is pointing to the Antichrist. And, well, the second solar eclipse that will traverse over America in 2024 will pass over the path of totality of the first eclipse that occurred in 19, uh, 2017, exactly where it peaked, which is over Little Egypt and also a place named Cairo, Illinois. In the Bible, the Antichrist is described in Isaiah chapter 31, and this chapter begins with, Woe to those who go down to Egypt and rely on horses. Well, Barack Obama, right after becoming president, went down to Cairo, Egypt, to deliver his famous Cairo, Egypt speech in order to tell the Muslim world that America is no longer a Christian nation. And also, when he was a U.S. senator, he went down to Cairo, Illinois, to deliver a speech. Barack Obama went down to Cairo, Egypt, exactly 3,000 days before the eclipse passed over the area of the country nicknamed Little Egypt. In the Bible, after the Hebrews were delivered from Pharaoh, which is symbolism for the Antichrist, out of Egypt, 3,000 souls perished in God's judgment in the wilderness. These two eclipses engender, that cross over each other, engender an X, if you will, over the country. But more accurately, it is symbolism for a Tav mark, the letter Tav in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the letter Tav is the last letter and the uh, 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The Tav in Ezekiel chapter 9 is the inverse of what is described in Bible prophecy in the book of Revelation as the mark of the Antichrist. So the mark of the Antichrist in Bible prophecy is this thing that if you take, you will go to hell. And if you don't take it, it says that you won't be able to buy or sell and participate in society. You won't be able to, for example, buy the rationed food when there is food shortages very soon. And so this mark of the Antichrist, the inverse of it is the Tav mark. And the Tav is the 22nd letter, and it's the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Well, the, anti, the mark of the Antichrist is described in the last book of the Bible, um, which is the book of Revelation, which is the 22nd of 22 books in the Bible that have a total of 22 chapters. And so that is more confirmation that the Tav mark is symbolism for the mark of the Antichrist, and again, the Tav mark is what is engendered with these two eclipses that are seven years apart. In Daniel chapter 9, we have a symbolic seven years described as being the period of the, anti of the end times and the Antichrist's rule. It is only symbolic, and we are in that symbolic seven years because it began symbolically in the second half of 2017 and also specifically symbolically with the Great American Eclipse that passed over the center of the country and Cairo, Illinois. And again, so, okay. So the Tav mark, the Hebrew letters are also symbols for things. And, the, and they're also numbers, like Roman letters are also numbers. In the, in, uh, Roman numerals are also uh, letters in the Roman alphabet. Same with Greek letters. They're also numbers. Well, same with the Hebrew uh, alphabet. And the Tav letter is the equivalent of the number 400. 
okay? And the numbers, or rather the letters in the Hebrew alphabet are also symbols for things. And the Tav letter is also the symbol for prophetic signs. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God says that the lights in the sky are for prophetic signs, primarily, first and foremost. And the two brightest lights in the sky are the sun and the moon. And they produce eclipses. And the grand coincidence is that the sun is 400 times further away and 400 times bigger than the moon. And so... In other words, whoever created the Hebrew alphabet also created eclipses. There's no other possibility. I, I hope you got that. So the grand coincidence is what produces eclipses, and the number 400 is involved, as I mentioned. And the Tav is the symbol for the number 400 and the symbol for prophetic signs. And the lights in the sky are for prophetic signs, as it says in Genesis 1.14. And so whoever created the Hebrew alphabet also created eclipses. In other words, God created eclipses and the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so that's very significant. And this 400 is connected to Egypt through Pharaoh in Egypt persecuting the Hebrews for 400 years. And that's why the eclipse passed over the area of the country nicknamed Little Egypt. The primary reason, by the way, this area of the country is nicknamed Little Egypt is because of Cairo, Illinois, which is at the confluence of the two major rivers in America and a number of other major rivers. They all come together, if you will, in the center of the country there and then ultimately flow out through the Mississippi River. And which, by the way, the Mississippi from the area of Little Egypt connects to Memphis, Tennessee, which is named after, of course, Memphis, Egypt. And God uses Memphis, Tennessee in his prophetic signs as well. But that's another story. Some social media sites have a maximum length for videos that can be posted. And so I need to cut this video into two parts. Click on the link to watch the remainder of this video. You can also find this link in the description box below this video. Make sure you watch the remainder of this extremely important video that is posted on a different channel than the one you are watching now. The link to the rest of this video is in the description box below this video. Hopefully you at least found this introduction video to be interesting, and if so, please leave a like and upvote the video, and please consider sharing the video.